Yo, this is MTLs. Welcome back to my channel. In the previous video, I showed you how you can create your own custom GPT with knowledge base and then use Replit server to communicate with OpenAI's API using a low code uh, Python solution. In this video, I will expand on the previous video to create a more robust conversational chatbot and then show you how you can jailbreak that chatbot and integrate that into a website. We'll be using a website that is created with AI. You can create this website in 30 seconds or less. It matches your chatbot's persona and color. By the end of this video, you will have mastered the skills to create your own custom GPT chatbot. It also can be sold to any businesses looking to enhance their website with AI capabilities. Let's get started. Don't forget to download my free resource on monetizing custom GPT solutions to get the most of your chatbot projects. For more personalized advice, book a 15 minute call with me via Canly and let's discuss your project in detail. Just a quick recap, in our last video, we wrote a Python script in Replit server that could interact with the open AI's assistant. Just like before, we need the assistant ID as well as the OpenAI API key uh, so that we can create a more dynamic chatbot uh, that can be deployed into our website. We're going to keep the script the same as before, but we'll just add a little bit of modifications. Just follow along with me as I make the modifications. And also, don't worry, I'm gonna give you the finished template for you to just copy and uh, replicate on your end so that you don't have to write the code from scratch. The main difference here in this uh, code is that instead of just interacting with the OpenAI's uh, Assistant API like the previous video, we're creating a Flask application. So when connected to the OpenAI's API, it's a, it acts as a simple web server and um, it acts like a messenger. It takes uh, requests from users, like asking questions or giving commands, and it sends these requests to the OpenAI's API and then delivers the response back to the users. So this setup allows you to build web apps or services that use AI to generate text, answer questions, or perform tasks based on user input. You'll also notice there are two methods and methods are basically commands that tell a web server what to do. We have a get method. This is for asking the server to send some data back. In our case, we're going to uh, interact with the OpenAI assistant and get back a thread ID when we start the interaction. The post is for sending data to the server. It also gives you some data back so in this case, we're going to send a thread ID as well as the user input and get uh, the OpenAI assistance message back. Also go to tools, secrets, and ensure that you have the OpenAI API key uh, included in there. Your assistant ID is going to be the same assistant that we created in our last video. Once everything is uh, set up you could click the run button and just like before it's going to install any um, packages that are needed it's only going to do this once once the web server is successfully running you'll see this page don't worry uh, we just don't have a front page to this website but rest assured that the web server is deployed Okay, you're going to copy the link to this page and then we're going to go over to VoiceFlow. We'll be using VoiceFlow to create our front end chat interface that will basically pick up our messages, send it over to the back end server that we've created, uh, communicate with OpenAI and send the response back that will be showed on the chat interface. If you have an account, you can just log in. And if you don't, then go ahead and create an account. You can use a free plan, which is the sandbox plan, which will also allow you to deploy uh, a chatbot agent. 
Okay, when you um, log in, you're gonna see a workspace. I'm going to give you a voice flow template that you can just plug and play so you don't have to recreate this uh, chat blocks. Okay, click on the first block after the start message. And then you're gonna go back to that web server address. You're gonna copy and paste that here and then make sure the suffix is start. It's gonna basically initiate the start command and then the third block here, you're going to also put in the web server address and make sure the chat suffix is also there. Great, this should be all you need to get this up and running. We're just gonna go over and make sure everything's in place. Ensure the web server is running, that is important. Okay, just to give you a little bit of idea how this is going to work in the voice flow side, when you start the conversation, it's going to send the start uh, method into uh, our web server. It's going to generate the thread, return back the thread ID, and then on the second block, as you can see, greet the user and get the user's query. When it gets the query, it's going to save it into a variable and then send off that query along with the thread ID to the chat method uh, to our web server. And then it's gonna return back the response from OpenAI's assistant and post it in our chat interface. And then it's gonna go back to listening for the user's query again, and then rinse and repeat the whole process. So in this way, we set up a system that we can use to have this back and forth conversation with the assistant. Okay, let's go ahead and run this and see this bad boy in action. So we run it. As you can see, it has greeted me now. So I'm saying I'm asking, who are you? Let's see how it responds. You can go back to the web server and uh, you can test that it had picked up the messages that uh, we have sent it. And then it's also gonna print out the responses in our web server. So you can, uh, you can also kind of test it's working or not. Okay, so it returned me back the message from the OpenAI Assistant into the chat interface. Okay, let's ask something else. Give me a quote, okay? Next, I'm gonna show you how you can deploy this chatbot into a website. We'll use um, a platform called Hostinger. It's a web hosting service that offers an easy to use AI website builder, allowing you to quickly create websites without needing technical skills. This tool automates the design process, making web development accessible to everyone. This is a game changer, uh, especially with AI, it's only gonna get better and you're definitely missing out if you're not taking advantage of uh, the easy uh, website builder. Yeah, I remember not so long ago, I thought building website was a really complex thing. And that was true because you needed to know a lot of complex languages like JavaScript, etc. But now um, it's uh, so easy. The other day, I also asked ChatGPT to build me a website. So it gave me all the code, HTML files and index, and it gave me a really proper website. So definitely I would encourage you to also build websites on the side as you're building the chatbot because it's it goes hand in hand and it's gonna definitely open up a whole new paradigm how businesses uh, and customers interact with each other. You could uh, take help from ChatGPT to come up with a description for the website. Uh, over here, I'm just telling ChatGPT in a few words what I want the website to be about. And, uh, and it also gave me a great description. As you can see, you, you can also provide examples how the description would look like. Uh, this is also good practice for prompt engineering um, so that, uh, so that ChatGPT can understand exactly what you're trying to do. Then you go ahead and match up the colors with the chatbot. Copy the hex code. You would need this later. So the AI website builder is gonna get you 80% there. You might have to do some touch up uh, to 
you know, change the images, improve the uh, content. But for the most part, the layout and the structure is going to be created. I have a few images that I can use. Uh, I can also take advantage of the AI writer, the AI image generator, and also the AI logo generator. So over here, I'm doing a little bit of touch up to create my logo and then quickly uh, putting it back to the website. And uh, as you can see, the process is very simple, straightforward, and doesn't uh, require any coding whatsoever. Making sure I match the colors exactly how I need it. Okay, and once it's ready, you can go back to voice flow. Go ahead and click on publish. So it's gonna publish. Just you can name it whatever you want. You're gonna then click on integrations. Okay. We're gonna quickly match up the colors, uh, use the hex code uh, that we copied earlier. You can also customize and choose the assistant image as well as the title for the chatbot. Once everything is ready, go ahead and copy the code at the top. And then you're gonna go back to the website. You're going to click the three dots, then integrations. And then you're just going to paste that code under the custom code section. Go ahead and save the changes. And then go ahead and go live. Okay, everything should be good to go now. And you'll notice the chat widget at the bottom right. Go ahead and click that. Hi, I'm Tim Ferriss AI. How can I help you today? So this is basically an active connection with the with our web server now so we can go back to the web server you see it's uh, live we're gonna type a message here how can I make the perfect the, again I'm asking questions knowing uh, you know the information would be picked up from one of Tim Ferriss's books the four-hour chef and let's see uh, if it gives me a response back Okay, it gave me a response, as you can see. It's very thorough. Um, and again, we can make this concise with prompt engineering so that you can conserve your tokens. As you know, we are using a GPT-4 model. Yeah, it's definitely not friendly from a cost perspective. If you want more help in terms of prompt engineering and the do's and don'ts, of building your custom GPTs, definitely download my free resource. I'm gonna link it in the description below. And if you found value in this video, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe and hit the notification bell. I am posting videos every week consistently on this topic. So I'll see you on the next one.